Happy Wednesday, guys. I'm so excited because we are halfway through with our learning this week. And I'm excited because you guys have been doing such a great job with decimals. And yesterday we worked on rounding decimals to the nearest tenth and the nearest hundredth. And you guys did so well with it. Today we're going to practice a little bit more with that because I know sometimes when you guys hear rounding, you think, oh, I don't know. I, I get confused sometimes. Well, I want you to not think about that because you guys are doing so well with this. Just remember if it says to round to the nearest tenth, look at your number in the tenth place, and then look at the number right next door and see, okay, is it five or more? Raise the score. Four or less, let it rest. Perfect. Um, and then that's going to tell you what you need to do. And you would do the same thing if it said that you need to look for the hundredths place and then round that. So you look there and then you look over in the thousands place. Let's go ahead and take a look at our textbook. 5B. Let's open up to page 60. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and take a look at number one underneath let's practice because we finished up number 25 yesterday uh, for homework. So um, number one says nine tenths, nine tenths. Let's just get warmed up this morning. Nine tenths divided by three. I'm gonna go ahead and make this into a decimal because that's easier for me to see. So I'm gonna take my nine and I'm gonna put it in the tenths place just like this. So my three, my whole number is gonna go on the outside of my division problem and my nine tenths will go on the inside and I've gotta find the quotient or what this is going to equal. So three times what will get me to zero Awesome job, zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down here. And before I come down here, I'm gonna go ahead and put my decimal there so I don't forget. Awesome. So zero minus zero is zero, perfect. And I'm gonna bring down my nine. Three times what will get me to nine? Excellent, three. So three times three is nine and I'm gonna subtract that there. And am I down at zero? I sure am, so I am good to go. So for number one, we would have gotten 0 0.3 as our answer. And then up there in that green box, right next to where it says tenths, you would just put three tenths because this and this, those are the same things, okay? So they just wanted you to put it in word form. All right, what I'd like for you to go ahead and do is I would like for you to try number two on your own, okay? Pause. Okay, excellent job. So we have 24 tenths and we're going to divide that. Ooh. I don't know what that is. Divide that by four. Okay, cool. All right, so you guys might be thinking, all right, Miss Cantrell, how would I write 24 tenths? Well, let's go ahead and look at it different ways. So if I have, that would be two and four tenths. Hmm, let's try that, let's see. Okay, I'll put that there. Four times oh, zero will get me close to two. Okay, um, four times what will get me to 24? Let's see, what do we guys, what do we think? Perfect, six. And that is 24, right? So that gets me to zero. So I would not, if I'm writing 24 tenths, I would not write it like this because that's 24 hundredths. It ends in the hundredths place and you need your decimal to end in the tenths place, which is why we have two and four tenths here, okay? So you have your number ending in the tenths place. Here it would be ending in a hundredths place, so it would not go with the tenths. That's why we made it 2.4, okay? So 0 0.6 <clears throat> would be your answer, or six tenths, 
Okay, that one was a little tricky. Let's go ahead and try number three. Pause the video. Perfect. So we have six hundredths this time. Hundredths. Oh, that's a long word. Divided by two. Okay, easy enough. All right, so let's go ahead and make this into a decimal. So if I need my six to be in the hundredths place, here's the ones, tenths, and hundredths. So it would look just like that and divide that by two. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and set it up because it looks a little bit better. I'm gonna bring my decimal up before I forget. Two times what is zero? Zero, outstanding. Bring down that zero. Don't bring down your six yet. Two times what gets me to zero? Zero, absolutely. Okay. And six. And then lastly, two times what gets me that six? Three. Great. And then I have zero. So my answer for this one, for number three, would be zero point zero three or three hundredths. Okay. These are equal. These are the same thing. Okay. All right, last one, let's go ahead and try number four on our board. Pause. Okay, so we have 35 hundredths. Oh, here comes that long word again. 35 hundredths, and then we are dividing it by five. Okie doke, cool. I can already kind of look at these numbers and I can already see that, all right, 35 divided by five is what guys? Seven, yeah. So you could even go ahead and say, all right, well, 35 divided by five I know is seven. So I know that my answer is probably seven hundredths, which would look like this with seven in my hundredths place. That's a quick way to look at it, okay? If you wanted to do long division, that's fine. Those are just two different strategies that I wanted to make sure to show you today. So if you have 0 0.35, okay, hundredths, so 35 hundredths divided by five, you're gonna end up getting the same thing that we just had with seven hundredths, but I can show it to you this way in case it's easier for you to see. So this will be zero, five times zero is zero. Bring down your three. Oh, still nothing. Okay, because five times zero is zero. Bring down my five. Five times seven is 35, bringing that all the way down to zero without any remainders. So again, my answer would be seven hundredths. But what I would do instead of um, going through all of this long division is taking a look and seeing if you can find um, a common factor, um, a multiple for this one, but a factor for this number to see if there's anything that they have in common. Um, and the same thing goes for the one that we did on number three where it had six hundredths divided by two. You can tell that six divided by two is three and then just stick on your hundredths. So you could see that it would just be three hundredths. Now it's okay if you go through and you do the long division, that's totally fine. But I wanna make sure that when you're doing math, you're being observant to what the numbers are, what their relationships are between each other. Um, and then that way you can sometimes find little tricks within your math problems to help you do them more quickly um, or to be able to help you see why number relationships matter in math so much. All right, awesome. Um, let's go ahead and do this, friends. Let's do a couple practices with rounding decimals. That was just a bit of a warm up with our division piece of it. So let's go ahead and hop down to number 16 on page 60, it says divide and round each quotient to the nearest tenth. And on our whiteboards, let's go ahead and write tenth because that's just a keyword that I need to remember, um, that I need to round it. So I have 0 0.8 divided by 5. Well, I'm looking at those. Do I have any, any relationship between 8 and 5 here? No, not really. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide like usual, but it's good to check that just in case. I'm going to bring my decimal up to the top. Five times what gets me to zero? 
zero, great job. Bring down my eight, don't bring down your decimal. Five times what gets you close to eight? Yep, we can just do one. So five times one is five. Eight minus five, we're gonna have three. Okay, now I don't really wanna put 0.1 with a remainder of three because then there's gonna be no way for me to look into a hundredths place to be able to round this tenth. So let me go ahead and erase this remainder. I've gotta keep going. Who can remind me what I need to put next to my eight? What number can I put next to my eight to keep it going? Great job. We're gonna put a zero here and I'm gonna bring it down. Five times what gets me to 30? Absolutely six. And then we're gonna subtract our 30 and we're gonna end up with our zero, which is good. So I come up here and I look at my quotient, which is my answer to my division problem. And I'm gonna erase all this just so it's easier for my eyes to look at. And I ended up with 16 hundredths. <clears throat> now it says to round to the nearest tenth. So I'm gonna look at the number that is in my tenths place. Who can tell me what number is in my tenths place in this decimal? Absolutely, the number one is in my tenths place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and look right next door over here at my six, which is in my hundredths, and I'm gonna do my riddle. Okay, four or less, let it rest. Okay, is my six four or less? No, so that means that it must be five or more. Six is more than five. So then I need to raise the score. I need to add a tenth to this number one. So then this is going to become zero point two. Now you could say zero point two zero if you wanted to. You are not gonna keep this six guys because you are rounding. You're rounding to the nearest tenth. So you really shouldn't have anything in your hundredths place because look, if I said, okay, Miss Kentrell, that's a two and then I'm gonna keep my six here. Oh, okay, well, that's not something to the nearest tenth. I've got a number that's all the way in the hundredths if I do that. So if I keep my zero here, then that shows me, oh, okay, there's my tenths. I'm not going over tenths by adding anything to it. I would like for you to go ahead and try number 17 on your own. Go ahead and pause the video. Excellent job. So we have 2.68. And we're gonna divide that by four. And again, we're going to be rounding our quotient to the nearest tenth. So I'm looking at these numbers. Ooh, definitely since we've got some numbers in my tenths and my hundreds, I'm not really seeing any relationship between the numbers, but it's important for me as a mathematician to make sure that I'm doing that, just in case there is. But there's not, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to solve it um, the way that I'm used to. So I'm gonna put four on the outside of my division house and 2.68. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my decimal and I'm gonna bring it up here. Four times what gets me close to two? Mm, nothing, right? So double check your answers here, guys, and make sure that what you did is following along with me. Four times what? Boop, boop. Gets me close to 26. What could I say there? Mm -hmm. Good, I could say six. And then that is 24, zero, two, bring down my eight. Four times what gets me to 28? Excellent job, seven. Good, okay, so then there's my decimal. So I have um, nothing in my ones, a six in my tenths, and a seven in my hundredths. Now what I need to do is I need to round this to the nearest tenth. So I'm gonna erase everything around it and I'm just gonna look at that guy. I might write it bigger for us. There we go. Now I need to go ahead and round to the nearest tenth. So there's my tenths place. Boop. And then I'm gonna look next door at my hundredths and I'm gonna see what kind of number he is. So is he four or less? Is he five or more? What are we thinking here, guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So this is five or more Raise the score. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a 10th to it. Okay. I'm going to add one tenth to that number. So then that would become zero point 
0 0.7. Okay, I'm just showing you the math, the, the reasons why we're actually adding one on there and taking it off. Now, because we brought a tenth over here and we're rounding to the nearest tenth, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a zero here. I'm not gonna put that seven there because otherwise that would be 77 hundredths and that's not what it's asking me for. It's asking me to go to the nearest tenth, not to the nearest hundredth. So here we have 0 0.7, or if you just have, uh, excuse me, 0 0.70, or like I was thinking, um, if you just have 0 0.7, those are the same thing. This shows 7 tenths, and this also shows 7 tenths. So either of those, if you got that for your answer for 17, would have been perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and do one more rounding problem together, and then I'm going to go ahead and send you to do some on your own today. So our last problem that I want you to look at today is actually uh, number 19. We're going to skip one there. All right, let's go ahead and do 3.39 divided by 6. And the reason I wanted you to skip was because on this one, it wants you to round to the nearest hundredth. And on today's work, you're going to be rounding to the nearest tenths and hundredths again. So I wanted to make sure we had a little review of both of those. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my problem. Three and 39 hundredths. Okay, bring my decimal up. Perfect, I'm all set up and I am ready to go. Six times zero would be zero. So there's my three. Bring down this three. Six times five would be 30. Zero, three, nine. Okay, six times what gets me close to 39? Mm, I could do six, 36, zero, three, wait a minute. Do I have something left over? Yes, I do. What do I need to add up here? I shouldn't have any remainders when I'm trying to round. Excellent, add a zero. Bring that down to my three and make that a 30. Six times what gets me to 30? Absolutely, guys. Great job today. Five. So 30 minus 30 is zero. Am I good to go now? Absolutely, I am. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase my board. I'm going to keep my quotient here, though. And I am going to round to the nearest hundredth. Now, we know from the problems we've been doing earlier today that this is the number that's in your tenth, but that's not what we're looking at now. We're looking at the hundredths place, which is this guy right there. So I'm going to look to the right. I'm going to look next door at what's in my thousandths place. And I'm going to think, okay, is that five or more? Oh, it sure is. So I'm going to go ahead and add one hundredth. So it would be just like this. To my decimal here. Okay, so then I would end up with 0 0.57. And if it helps you to actually write it out so that you can see, oops, so that you can see the math, um, that's good and that's totally fine too. Okay, all right, if you feel like you need extra practice with this before you jump into your problems today, that's fine. You can try out number 20 and number 21. Um, if you want to go ahead and pause the video and try those, and then I'm going to go ahead and tell you the answer. So for number 20, your quotient would have actually been 0 0.395, but then when you round it to the nearest hundredth, you would have gotten 0 0.40, okay? And then if I had done 21, I would have gotten 1.142 as my actual quotient, and then I would have gotten 1.14 as that answer. Now, if you're a little confused on that, feel free to text me, call me, email me, and we can work through those two problems if you'd like. Okay, go ahead and open up your workbook for me, please, guys. And today for your workbook, I'm gonna have you open up to page 33. So 5B workbook, not your textbook. All right, go ahead and do those problems for me and then pause the video. Excellent job today, guys. So go ahead and check your work. 
And for workbook page 33, this should be what you got. And then for workbook page 34, if you haven't done that, go ahead and do 34. Okay. And then 34 would be, and this would be our answers. Okay. Excellent job, guys. If you are having trouble with rounding um, or finding the quotients and finding the decimals up here at the top, don't forget you're adding your zeros. Then let me know when we can have a math check-in. Just let me know that you need to have a one-on-one -on -one conference, okay? All right, guys. Have a beautiful, beautiful day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.